welcome to the Rock Church and World Outreach Center podcast. We hope that this message will strengthen and encourage you. Now here's a word from one of our special guests. God is good. Come on, guys. God is good. My message. My message called at your word. At your word. I'm so happy I brought my wife here with me on this trip. We have two beautiful children. Our son, he is 26. Um, by the way, tomorrow, 26. Don't, don't forget, we need to call him and congratulate him with his birthday. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes you are so busy, you just you forget about that stuff. And um, he's 26, and uh, he's married to a beautiful girl named Arina. They have two beautiful grandchildren of ours. I know, I know we don't look like a grandpa uh, and grandma to you, but it's very cold in our country. So, so ice makes us look younger. Hallelujah. <laughs> And we started very early. I get in love when I was three, she was two. <laughs> amen, amen. But it's, uh, it's such a perfect and amazing uh, privilege to, to, you know, just to have kids who love Jesus, who love God. My father is in our church, so, which is a grand granddad, is in our church. So we have four generations of the same family in one church. Come on, somebody. Come on. God is good. God is amazing. Amen. Well, as Pastor Dan told you, um, we just celebrated last year our 20th anniversary. And it was an amazing day. We had few packed services. We invited whole city to our celebration. Our pastors, Brian and Bobby Houston from Hillsong Church Australia, they came, they've been at our celebration. It was amazing. And you know what? 20 years is a long time. It's a long time. And uh, literally during those 20 years, tens of thousands of people would come through church they would pray the prayer of salvation they would do the right stuff they would listen into the word of God but my question this morning for all of us why don't we have tens of thousands of people today I mean those people they come they receive Christ they would do the right thing they pray the prayer of salvation and then you know somehow they disappear and a part of normal everyday reasons like people would move, they would get a job here or there. There are also reasons which I would say have more spiritual context. Some people backslid. Some people leave God. But you know what? I've been a pastor for 17 years. And being a pastor, I love watching people. I love watching people, I love watching their lives, I love watching what's going on in their lives. And I can say honestly, as a pastor, I believe most of the people, they are not bad. They are good people. They want to serve God. That's, uh, that video, what we were just watching uh, five minutes ago, it shows the heart of the volunteer. I believe so many people want to please God. They want to serve God. They don't want to forget about God. But you know what? Sometimes they get caught up in the circumstances of life. And if their lives are not based on the word of God, they get deviated from the Lord and get lost again. And this morning, I want to speak about those things because you know what? I could be so easily one of those persons, one of those people. If you are not careful, you would give in into the circumstances of life if our life is not based on the Bible and not based on His Word. It is more likely that these people would, as Apostle Paul would say it, they would fall out of the race and they would experience in the shipwreck of their faith. And this morning I want to speak about those, ty those types of people because I could be so easily be one of those. 
Why good people who come to church and find Christ fall apart and get lost again? The reason why I'm starting to tell you this is because it's interesting that that 20th celebration, we had so many people, I mean, few packed services, and it, uh, each one of those services, I would see some people who were the part of our church. But somehow, five years ago, or maybe 10 years ago, or maybe even 15 years ago, they would leave church, they would go away, they would not find another Bible-based church, and they get lost again. And you know what? It is a sad reality. Sometimes, come on guys, if we are not careful, we could be one of those people ourselves. And my pastors, they were talking to some of those people because our pastors are long enough in church, they know about this person or that person. It's interesting, they would say to us, their lives are the same, still the same as it was 15 years ago. Our lives are moving forward, you know, kids, grandkids, everybody serving Jesus, everybody is happy. Uh, it doesn't mean that we don't have any problems in life, but at least we are not standing the same. We are moving forward. Come on, somebody. I want to come maybe to this church in five years' time, and I want you to see your life flourishing in Jesus' name. I don't want you to stay the same in Jesus' name, but we need to be careful because those four things which I want to speak about could easily destroy your walk with Jesus. You know, there is a Bible verse, if you can look with me to Luke chapter 5. There is a story when Jesus saw some fishermen, some disciples, they were catching some fish. And it says in the Bible, they were catching whole night, but they did not catch anything that night. And then Jesus said to Simon, go back to the sea and throw down the nets one more time. And it says in the Bible, but Simon Peter answered to him and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. And I love what Simon said next. He said, nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. Come on, church. At your word. This is the name of my message this morning. At your word. If we are basing our lives on anything else, but not at his word, we're not going to have victory in our lives. Let's be very careful and let's not allow those four things in our life to destroy the plan of God in your own life. Are you ready to write them down? Number one, emotions should not dictate you what to believe, but only the word of God. Come on, church. Emotions should not dictate you what to believe, but only the word of God. Anybody have emotions in your life? Come on, ladies, <laughs> ladies, come on, some men. We all have emotions. We all go through emotional times in our lives. And if we are not careful, do you know that emotions can destroy everything in your life? It can destroy your family, it can destroy your church, it can destroy your business, it can destroy your career if you are not careful with your emotions. Now, I look at Wikipedia. That's the most trustful source I could find on the internet. <laughs> it says in Wikipedia, I actually like what it says, emotions is a generic term for subjective, say with me, subjective, subjective conscience experience that is characterized primarily by psychological expression, biological reaction, and a mental state. Oh, my, my English is so good, it's unbelievable. I did not even know what I just read, but it, it's great, it's amazing. <laughs> Guys, you need to understand, my native language is Ukrainian. I'm thinking in Russian, I'm speaking in English, and I'm praying in tongues right now as I speak. So you don't want to mess with this head, hallelujah. 
And I feel sorry for this lady right here because she needs to translate everything I'm saying right now. Hallelujah. Come on, give her a big hand as well. Listen, listen. Emotions are subjective. In other words, you cannot really put a finger on it. I'm worried. Why are you worried? I don't know. I'm worried. Have you ever felt like that? Have you ever been in that stage of life when you are worried and you don't know why you worry? Sometimes you watch CNN and you worry straight away. That's why we need to watch Word of God most of the times in our lives. I mean, CNN is cool, but the Word of God is much better. Hallelujah. It is subject, emotions are subjective. You feel emotions all your life. Stress, anxiety, disturbance, unrest, concerns. You are thinking about your future and you are worried about your future because you may be living in San Bernardino and it's not the nicest economically speaking city in whole of America. So you are worried in your life. Can I encourage you? Don't be worried. Come on, somebody. Let's read our Bibles and let's base our lives on the word of God and on the word of God only. Hallelujah. Let's give it up for Jesus one more time. You might sit here and you say, hey, I, I'm not an emotion person. Well, you never know. You ne I, I, never, I was never an emotional person. I was a musician all my life. And you know what? Musicians are cool. I mean, I look at your musicians, they are so cool, you know, they're just cruising in life, you know, they, 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 they just, yeah, and you know what, uh, but when I turn 40, something happens. <laughs> Maybe that's what you call midlife crisis, because I started to think about red Ferrari all of a sudden. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. I started to cry like crazy. I cannot watch movies on an airplane. I'm crying like a baby. I cannot watch Titanic. Another day I was watching Bambi. I should not watch Bambi. We are flying this Vera all the time and I'm like, I'm watching the movie and I cry like a baby. And she's like, what's wrong with you? I'm like, I'm... <laughs> I remember Pastor Jim, you know, when we were uh, when we were preparing for this 20th celebration. And I mean, we did so much stuff. We invited whole city. We invited our pastors to come. I mean, everything was ready. There is nothing to worry about. And between Saturday and Sunday, I had a nightmare. I'm not kidding. I had a nightmare. 3 a.m. I was waking up like crazy. And Vera is like, Jaya, what's, what, what's going on? 3 a.m. before Sunday, right before the first church service. And I said, I had a nightmare. She said, what did you dream of? I said, can you imagine you and me and Brian and Bobby, we are entering the building the first Sunday morning service, 10 a.m. This is our first Sunday morning service. We are entering the building, a big celebration uh, prepared and everything. And there is nobody in the auditorium. That's a nightmare of every pastor, I'm telling you right there. If you don't want your pastors having a nightmare, be in church on time. Come on, guys. Be in church on time. And they, 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 you know, there was no reason for that. The, the fact is we had such a wonderful day. The few packed services with overflow, many uh, dozens of people would got saved. It was an amazing day. It was nothing. See, see, it was no foundation. Emotions are so subjective. You cannot really, you cannot really, it, we have this phrase in our country, you drive yourself crazy. No one else does. You do it to yourself. And if we are not careful, guys, girls, ladies, <laughs> if we are not careful, you know, it, we, we can so easily destroy our life just because of the emotions. 
In Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 3 it says this, a dream comes when there are many cares. When you are carrying a lot, when you are taking care of the lots of stuff, be be aware because emotions are going to come to your life. Dreams are going to come to your life. Nightmares are going to come to your life if you are not building your life on the Word of God and on the, on the Word of God only. It's such a big, you know, challenge in people's lives that Jesus at his first sermon, Sermon on the Mount, he touched that subject when he speaks about people who are worried about everything. In, in Matthew chapter 6, verse 25, it says this. That is why I tell you not to worry. Come on, guys. Say with me, not to worry. Not to worry. One more time, not to, not to worry. That is why I tell you not to worry about your everyday life, whether you have enough food or drink or enough clothes to wear. That's for you ladies right there, enough clothes to wear. <laughs> No, seriously, when, when, when you are worried, how am I going to pay my bills? Would I have enough money for, for my petrol, for my car? Would I have enough money to pay for my education? And so on and so on. God says, don't worry. Don't be based your life on the emotions of life, but only at my word, Jesus said. Come on, guys. Let's give it up for Jesus one more time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, it says this. Give all your worries and cares to God, for He cares about you. He cares about... Listen, San Bernardino people, He cares about you. He cares about your situation. He cares about your economy. Come on, guys. Amen. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, it says this. Don't worry about anything. I love it. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has. If you need something, just give, give praise to the Lord. Thank Him. Come on, guys. Let's do this right now. Let's thank Jesus for everything He has in our lives, for our lives. Come on. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Number two. Number two, feelings should not lead your ways, but only the Word of God. Feelings should not lead your ways, but only the Word of God. You know, some people, they are so emotional and they are so... Uh, uh, they feel led. A anybody heard the phrase, I feel led? <laughs> Come on. Anybody here, I feel led, and you, and you see people, they feel led here, and then they feel led here, and then they feel led here. They leave one church, go to another church. They leave one family, go to another family. One business, go. Are you a zombie or something? <laughs> no, seriously. Seriously. Feelings should not lead your ways, only the word of God should lead your ways. Now, there is a big difference between emotions and feelings. I want to explain this to you because some of us, we could say emotions, feelings, emotions, feelings, feelings, emotions, it's like kind of like the same thing. It's not. It's not. Listen to this. Feelings is your attitude and sensibilities towards people, things, or circumstances which are logical. In other words, remember emotions, no logic. Are you, are you, are you with me? Feelings, very logical. For example, someone hurts you and you feel pain. It's very logical. Someone says something to you and you have all the reason to feel bad, to feel pain. Someone hurts you and you can, and you, uh, cause you pain and you can really feel that pain. What should be our reaction? Our reaction should be the same as it is written in Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. It says this, you should have the same Attitude, come on, say with me, attitude toward one another that Christ Jesus had. 
Now, what kind of the attitude Jesus had towards people he forgives? Come on! He forgives! And the Bible is saying, the apostle said, you should have the same attitude towards one another, towards husbands and wives and colleagues and pastors and leaders and churchgoers, towards one another, same attitude as Christ Jesus had, he forgives. So my advice to you, come on guys, let's forgive, let's forget, and let's move forward. You feel pain, you experience in pain, but you are making a constant decision to forgive, to forget, and to move forward. To move forward. In all of these situations, someone hurts you. Let's remember Jesus. Anybody, uh, anybody have seen the movie Passion of Christ? Oh my goodness, what a great movie. It took whole church. <coughs> I mean, I'm talking about Russia, I'm talking Ukraine. We, we occupied a couple of theaters and we just watched The Passion of Christ, Mel Gibson's movie. And I remember that scene when uh, Jesus was crucified on the cross. You remember that amazing scene? And you know what? All of my human, you know, inside was like this. You almost want Jesus to come down from that cross. Come on, take AK-47 and do ta 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 Now, listen. The interesting part, many of us would go in the movie theaters. Yeah! What a great movie! Come on, am I right or not? We, I mean, if Jesus would come from the cross and kill all of those soldiers, we would say, come on, that's a great movie, Terminator 5. <laughs> Have you noticed that Jesus did not do that? That's why Jesus is God and Bruce Willis is not. <laughs> Forgive me for my AK-47 joke. I, mean, I know I'm in America, I need to be careful with this stuff. But it feels good being Russian. I love you guys. You know, when you think about this, you realize why Jesus said, but whoever slaps you in your right cheek, turn the other to him, also, it just does not comprehend with our thinking. <coughs> but that's the way and that's the truth. And that's, if, if you are careful with this and if you do what Jesus did, forgive, forget, and move on. I mean, think about how many families would be saved. How many families if the husband would forgive wives? And if wives would forgive their husbands, and if they would forgive, come on, if they would forget, and if they would move forward. How many, how many churches? We would have tens of thousands of people in our churches. It, you, you know, you don't deny pain, you feel pain, but you are making constant decision to forgive, to forget, and to move forward. You know, this church has been going for years. And I'm pretty sure for some of people, we've been offended in this church. People have been offended in our church in Kiev. 20 years is a long time. I, I believe it's Rick Godwin who said once, he said, uh, Pastor Rick Godwin from San Antonio, he said, if you want to get offended in church, just be a part of that church long enough. You want to get offended? Be in church for 20 years. You want to get offended in a family? Be a part of that family for 20 years. <laughs> you know, some people asking, Pastor Zhenya, you've got such a nice family, great, you know, kids, grandkids. What is one thing of your, you know, success of your marriage? Is it love? Yes, it is. <laughs> but most of all, it's forgiveness. It's forgiveness. 
Let's make the... And you, you don't deny pain, you feel pain. As I said, 20 years is a long time. In 20 years, I've been preaching for 17 years. Now, the question, do you think I could say something wrong been preaching for 17 years? Now, I was thinking about this, Pastor Jim. In 17 years, I probably preached about 1,000 messages in my church. Now, 1,000 messages, 35 minutes every message, it's 35,000 minutes. Do you think in 35,000 minutes I could say something wrong? <laughs> now, do you know how much is 35,000 minutes? It's 26 days and nights non-stop talking of one person. Do you think I could, say, I could say in my church something wrong in 26 days and 26 nights of non-stop talking? With my wife, I say one thing and it is wrong. <laughs> Any man can say amen. You, you know what I'm talking about. You know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> and you go and you preach and you give your heart out and then you get this nasty email. <laughs> you know, I believe Christians become too sensitive these days. We need to toughen up a little bit. Come on, somebody. We need to toughen up. Let's forgive, let's forget, and let's move forward. Hallelujah. Because I can tell you this. Yes, maybe, maybe those people, maybe those people were hurt. Maybe of some sentences. Or maybe someone did something to them 5, 10, 15 years ago. But they did not make a decision to forgive and forget. And you know what? Nobody, you know, going through the consequences of their lives except them. Yeah. I am moving forward. My wife and I, my family is moving forward, guys. It's sad when because of those feelings, you can experience the shipwreck of your faith. Number three. Experience should not form your expectations, but only the word of God. Experience should not form your expectations, but only the word of God. Sometimes we are doing something in our life and we got bad experience. And we say, oh, God doesn't want me to do that. God is not anointing me to do this. You know, sometimes the first experience, maybe not a right experience, try it one more time. That's why Jesus said to those disciples, go back to the sea and throw the net on another side. And Simon said, we've been fishing whole night and we got nothing. Who can understand it's a bad experience? But then he said an amazing word. He said, nevertheless, at your word, I will try it one more time. I will do it again. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Maybe you prayed for someone and got a negative result. Don't stop praying for someone. I remember I was praying when I became a pastor. It's a funny story. When I became a pastor, I saw my pastor would pray for some sick people in the end of the service. And I remember the first couple of Sundays, I prayed for three old ladies. All three of them died next week. That's not funny. Yes, it is actually. It is funny. And the word came to the church, and the church started to call each other. And you remember Pastor Jenya was praying about that? Like, she's dead. That, that other lady, she's dead. She's dead. All three of them died. Next Sunday, I was in church. I said, anybody wants me to pray for your healing? They had, oh, no, no, no. Now, now, would I stop praying for healing? No. I would keep praying. Maybe I did a mistake. I should not pray for old ladies at the first Sunday, you know. They were like 80 and 90. Maybe it was a time for them to go to be with the Lord Jesus. I'm like, Jesus healed them. Jesus. That was stupid. You know, no, not stupid, but you know what I mean. I should better pray for young guy with a flu. You know, something like that. That would be fantastic. That would set up my ministry straight away here. Bad experience. <laughs> Have 
we've been thinking why new Christians are so telling about Jesus everywhere they go. Like the guy got saved and he's so vocal about his faith. He's telling about Jesus everywhere, Starbucks, you know, trains, buses, everywhere. New, have you noticed that new Christians are telling about Jesus to everyone they meet? And many of us who are with God for 20 years, we keep silence. Why? Because we've been inviting, they not come. We invite, they don't come. We invite, they don't come. We invite, they don't come. We stop. Bad experience. Let's be people who are not bay, who, who, not, who, de, who decides. Let's decide my expectations are not going to be based on my experience. I will go and I will try one more time. One more time. Have you heard, have you heard the phrase, our God is a God of second chance? Come on. I don't like that phrase. So you want to tell me that our God is a God of only two chances? One, two, no soup for you, that's it. <laughs> I gave you one, I gave you second, that's it. No, I believe our God is a God of 10,000 chances. I believe our God is a God of one million chances. Hallelujah. Let's give it up for Jesus one more time in this auditorium. Hallelujah. And number four, number four, my last thought if we are not careful emotions feelings experience and number four opinion should not dominate your life but the word of god only you, you know americans you are strong nation russians we are strong nation we always have our own opinion about everything and that's a good thing but you know what Sometimes it's not good when our opinion is higher than the Word of God opinion. Sometimes it's not good when our opinion is higher than anyone else. Some people would say, oh, Pastor Jay, I'm pretty good of cutting off someone else's opinion. But my big question is, what about your own opinion? What about your own opinion about the, this thing? See, those people who would leave the church 5, 10, 15 years ago, they all would have their own opinion. And they would come to our 20th celebration and they can be so right in their eyes. But you know what? One thing, I can tell you one thing. They lost sparkle in their eyes. And you can be so right in your eyes, but don't let ever lose the sparkle of Holy Spirit in your eyes, in your ministry, in your family. Come on, somebody. In your life, in anything you do, you can be right in your own eyes. And by the way, the book of Proverbs is always talking about, it, it says in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 7, don't be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. In 16, verse 2, all the ways of a man are pure in his own eyes, but the Lord weighs the spirit. 21, verse 2, every man, every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord weighs the hearts. 26 verse 12, do you see a man wise in his own eyes? There is more hope for a fool than for him. The lazy man, 26, 16, is wiser in his own eyes than seven men who can answer sensibly. And the last one, 28, 11, the rich man is wise in his own eyes. But the poor who has understanding searches him out. What is the main phrase here? Your wrong eyes. See, you can be right in your own eyes. But let's make decision. Let God be the judge. That's what I love about that guy named Job. He was right in his own eyes. He was right in everything. But Job said those words. Listen to this. It can save your life one day. Listen. In Job chapter, chapter 9 verse 15. Even if I were right, I would have no defense. I could only plead with my judge for mercy. Even if I'm right, I'm going to present it to the Lord Jesus Christ and let him decide what he wants to do with it 
in my life. But I'm not gonna lose my sparkle. I'm not gonna lose my relationship and my, you know, all my victories in God. I'm not gonna lose just because I'm right. Did you receive the word this morning? Come on, guys. Did you receive the word? Father God, I thank you for the rock church. This is rock church, Father God. And we are not easily moved by emotions or feelings or experience or opinions. We are standing on the rock in Jesus' name. Father God, we ask your blessing over your people in the turmoil, in the difficult times. Father God, in this situation, in this economy, Father God, we are basing our lives on your word and on your word only. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And amen. Can I ask everybody just to close our eyes and bow down our heads? I want to talk to you for the next couple of minutes, which I have left, about your personal walk with Jesus. See, my life has changed because the Lord Jesus Christ came to my heart almost 22 years ago. You know, it's, um, I have not been looking for Jesus. I did not care about God. I did not care about the... Um, the, the Lord Jesus Christ myself, but the Lord has found me. I was invited one day to play for the evangelistic concert and I was in heavy metal rock band and uh, you know, I was not interested in Jesus, but I came to this meeting and I saw these people who, you know, were worshiping Jesus and I was one of those guys who would play on a stage but did not, heart, did not give my heart to Jesus because I was not interested in Jesus. I was coming to church for some time and uh, because we get close together with a pastor, I was invited to play for church, but uh, I did not know God, did not know Christ, was not interested in the messages. Actually, every time when pastor would speak, I would go down to the bar and have smoke cigarette and drink vodka, was not interested in God at all. Because I thought, I don't need this. I am raised in a Christian culture. Russia is a Christian country. The main religion is Orthodox and everybody thinks they are saved. Yes, maybe, you know, people are coming to church once or twice for Easter and Christmas and we thought we are okay, but that one day it hits me, about two months later, it hits me that the Bible says, if I don't confess with my mouth, if I don't believe in my heart that Jesus is God, I could be lost for eternity. And right now I want to speak right into your heart. Maybe you are in this auditorium for, you, for the first time and you think you are okay with God. Let me ask you this question. Did you ever accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior? Did you ever pray the prayer of salvation of, uh, in your own life openly before God? I want to pray with you if you did not, if you don't know, if you are not sure if you are saved or not. I want to pray with you and for you this simple prayer. I want everybody to close our eyes and everybody to bow down our heads. It's not a religious activity. I'm talking straight to your heart. If you need this prayer, and if you're asking, Pastor Zhenya, please pray for me, I will count to three. And when I say one, two, three, I want you just to raise your hand right where you're sitting so I can see where you are and I can pray with you and for you. Ready? One, two, three. Don't be shy. Don't be worried. Just raise your hand right now. Don't be shy. Nice and high right now. Thank you, 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 guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Couple of people on the back. Thank you, thank you. I see those hands. Thank you so much. Couple of hands here. Come on, guys. Thank you, thank you. If you need to raise your, I can see that hand. If you need to raise your hand right now, is your time. Thank you. I saw that hand. I saw those couple of hands, guys. This is not the auction. This is a real stuff. If you need Jesus, just simply raise your hand right now where you are sitting and I can pray with you and for you. One more time. One more time. Who else? 
Come on, guys. Let's give it up for Jesus. Everybody in this auditorium. I've seen, I've seen maybe 20, 25 hands in this auditorium. Let's give it up for Jesus and for those people who raised their hands. Can I ask everybody to stand up? And if you raise your hand, one more thing. Can I ask you to make a bold step? Come out of your seats, wherever you are. Maybe you are in the last row, in the last seats. But come down from those seats or wherever you are sitting and come down here so I can pray with you and I can pray for you. Don't be shy. Don't be worried. Just make this step of faith and come down here. If you raise your hand, come down here. Come down. Come. 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 Don't be shy, guys. Come. Come. Let's give it up for those people, everybody, in this auditorium. Come. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Come. Come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Keep clapping, guys. Keep clapping. Keep encouraging those people. Hallelujah. Come. Come. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Come on. Keep clapping, church. Fantastic. Come, come. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you. Come and join us. Fantastic, fantastic. Some of more people are coming. Keep clapping, church. Keep clapping. Keep encouraging those people. Come on, guys. Come, come. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you. Amazing. Amazing. Now, some of more people come and give them a hand too, guys. Come on, guys. Come here. There are too many of you to shake your hands, but, you know, I'm, I'm just going to pray with you and pray for you. Repeat with me this prayer, but make this prayer from your own heart okay i'm gonna say the words of this prayer you repeat after me but you pray from your own heart you can close eyes let's pray together and whole congregation help us to pray together say with me dear lord jesus i come to you and i want to recognize i am a sinner jesus come into my heart come into my life be my lord and savior I am so sorry I have sinned against you, but now I proclaim you as my Lord and Savior. You are my God and I am your child. Help me, Jesus, not to be led by emotions or feelings, not by circumstances or experience, but by your word only. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. Come on, guys. Look at this. Come on, church. Congratulations. Pastor Dan is going to tell you what to do next. Yeah. I love you guys. Hey, you guys up front. Just look up here for a second. Put a smile on your face. This is the best decision of your entire life. I want to introduce you guys to a friend of mine right over here to my right, your left. This is Pastor Joel right over here waving at you. Good guy. Nothing weird's going to go on. You know, sometimes you go to church, you wonder, are they weird? Listen, he's cool. He's going to do three things. He's going to pray with you, uh, give you some free information, some free literature, and then he'll introduce you to a friend in a program that we have here called Spiritual Personal Trainer. Basically, it's a friend in church. He'll describe how it works, and then will let you come right back out. You can meet your friends and family, okay? It takes a couple minutes. People who came with you, they'll wait for you, okay? So just make a left turn. Follow Pastor Joel right this way. Let's give him a hand as they go. Come on. Hallelujah. God is good. Hey, you just heard that altar call. You just wanted to give God all of your heart and all of your life. Now let me lead you simply in a prayer of inviting Jesus Christ into your heart as your Lord and Savior. In fact, why don't you just go ahead and listen to me and go ahead and close your eyes and just repeat these words after me. I'll go slow. You repeat them. Say these words. Say, Father God, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I believe that Jesus Christ is your only begotten Son and that you sent him for me and that he died for me on that cross at Calvary. I believe that his blood washes away my sins, that I am now a new creature 
in Christ Jesus. And I thank you, Lord. I receive you now and forever as my Lord and as my Savior. I'm going to turn from sin, and I'm going to turn with all of my heart and all of my life to you, Jesus, as my Lord and as my Savior. Let it be known in heaven as well as upon the earth that I am born again. I'm a child of God, that I'm saved, and I'm headed for heaven and denying my presence in hell. Thank you, Jesus. I'm alive forevermore. Love you so much. God bless you guys. Everybody just say amen and receive Christ as your Lord and Savior. So talk to you later. God bless you. Bye-bye.